This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free and also how you can now join the brand new Sketchfab challenge and hone your skills. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a couple of assets, some add-ons and also, you know, some pretty stuff that you guys probably skipped while jumping through January all into the love month of February. And some of these things are basically Blender stuff and all of these Blender files that you'll be getting are 100% free, which means you can use them for anything that you want. Starting off, we're going to take a look at the Stylized Fantasy 3 Generator, which is a beautiful tool you can append on your project, and you can use this to create stylized trees. Now, the version 1, which is currently available, supports the basic tree generation, procedural back texture, and also some basic leaf material. There are also planned updates coming that would include wind animation, procedural falling leaves, and also much more variations to the back. It's quite impressive to see that RC12 has made this one available. And of course, if you like to get this, you want to play with it, you would need Blender 3.1 to actually get this going. And with that said, let's take a look at CG Thinker. CG Thinker is a beautiful developer that has actually made an AR mocap. Now this tool would definitely work with any webcam of choice and you can use this to stream and also create motion capture data directly in Blender. So the Blender AR mocap is a tool that will allow you to create finger and also full body motion capture data directly in Blender, while the Blender AR Track 2.0 would allow you to track your scenes and also work with a mobile app to track both facial deformation and also your environment. So if you're into VFX and you've been thinking about creating VFX stuff, probably you like to create characters, drive them and also track your data by simply using your mobile device, then this is definitely a welcome tool that you might want to consider checking out. And while we look at tools that you might want to check out, let's take a look at the procedural building generator. So there's a couple of things that Devi is giving out right now, which is a, a whole lot. So the building block generator would actually allow you to generate buildings by simply using the geometry node. And this is a beautiful one. You might want to consider checking out how this works. So for those who are into creating Skyrise buildings, you might want to consider looking at this as this comes with a couple of nice and beautiful things. The very version that we have here is the most recent version and it is totally free. You might want to also consider checking out some of his other contents that are quite impressive as well as the building generator is not the only thing that he has. He also has the low poly building city layout, which you might want to take a look at and also another one called the Blueprint Pro. So the Blueprint Pro would also allow you randomly create several buildings and it will randomize the details or the textures on these models as well. So from creating random buildings based on size and height, it would also randomize the textures that you would be getting with this. So for anyone who's been thinking about getting an all-in-one building generator sort of thing, then you should consider taking a look at Devi's page where he has offered all of his tools totally for free. It is also worth mentioning that Chris is doing something that is quite nice as you know, the geometry node is coming in hot and lots of artists are taking advantage of it to create something like this. If you open up the file, you would notice that you have all of your geometry nodes here. And if we scroll all the way down, we can now play with a noise scale. We can play with, you know, the noise trend, the noise scale, all of that stuff. And that looks cool. And of course, if you already have another geometry that you like to append this to, you can. So what I'm going to do is go over to the release, turn on the 3D cursor, hold on shift and tap on the keyboard and I'll get a simple cube. Now with this cube here, what we can do is go over to geometry node, click and append a geometry node. Now if we click on this drop down, we can now append the edge damage. But one thing you would notice is this is not as interactive as you would want it to be. So what we can do is very, very simple. First things first, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this cube, click on this button, and I can go all the way here. And instead of just simply having this just the way it is, we can get an object info. So let's just get that object info right there. And I can scroll all the way in and wire this there. So I can click wire this right here and I can do the very same thing to this one. So I can click as well and wire this right over there. And of course, go ahead and wire this one right over to this section where the second geometry is plugged. So once we have this going, the next thing which we need to do is to unplug this one. And the reason why we're unplugging it is so we can easily now go over to this geometry input and read the data that we want. Now, in this case, we don't have any data. So let's create a couple. I'm just going to hit shift and tap A on the keyboard and add the cube. So shift and A on the keyboard as well. And I'm going to add 
the icosphere. So once you add this, the next thing you can do, go back to the diamond object, which is the edge damage. And I can click on the drop down and append that cube. And with this cube here, we can start making those changes or I can change this from the cube to the icosphere. So either ways, you have that ease to select objects in real time and get them happening contrary to just going ahead to append it. Now, another thing that makes sense that you can do with a beautiful node setup like this, instead of going in here and dialing the noise scale, you can take this out and connect the scale all over to this point. And we have that as a noise scale and we can do the very same thing for the noise strength as well. So we can click as well and connect this all the way right there. And we can do this for every single thing. The same thing happens for the edge input. We can also bring this out and connect this edge offset right over to a point like so. So once you have this ready, next thing you can do is to go in and name this properly. And once you're done, you can start tweaking this and getting the most out of it. One thing which I've also found out is tools like the cone do not work with this. And again, if you like to use this, you need to make sure that you're working with Blender 3.1. You know, it's said on the page that you need Blender 3.0 but I kind of tried it and uh, I think Blender 3.1 is like the best tool that you should consider using. So for those who like to get this file, of course, you can also go ahead and download it. I'm going to put link in the description, but a huge shout out to Chris for making this available. And with that said, let's take a look at some add-ons. So this add-on is called the InPlacer. In most cases, once you're working with animations you've downloaded from the internet that deals with Mixamo or maybe any other platform, you notice that the animation moves forward. So it starts from one point and moves to the next point, and this might not be suitable for your games. So in this case, you might want all of your root nodes to stay in one place and this is what this add-on actually does. So instead of having that translation from one point to another based on the root node, you might want to actually cut that down by simply using the Implacer add-on. The Implacer add-on actually makes this super easy. So instead of dealing with the technicalities, you just have one simple button that you click and it makes all the motions stay in one place. As much as different motion capture repository providers gives you access to doing this on the web or on the service that you're working with, a tool like this is very handy, especially if you have multiple motions and you just want to have these things done with super ease. And something else that takes advantage of what you can do with Blender and also your game engine for you to work super easily is the Alter Mesh. So we've already talked about the Alter Mesh before. It is worth knowing that Alter Mesh version 1 is now here and it was just released a couple of days back. So Alter Mesh version 1 actually allows you to take your geometry node setup and import it into your game engine. And in this case, it is currently supported for Unreal Engine and we've already talked about this in a previous video, but it makes sense to see that the developer is constantly working on this as he's building it to make it even far better. So we've talked about a couple of things that this comes with. If you're thinking about creating curves or you're just thinking about creating a procedural asset which you can distribute across different points in your game, then you should consider taking a look at Alter Mesh as this has been heavily worked on to fix bugs and also stability. And one other impressive creator that we should talk about that actually gives out some very cool stuff is Cortis. Cortis has actually created a couple of add-ons and at the same time, there are sorts of tutorial resources that you can get on his page totally for free. So recently, he did improve the Bygen Generative Toolkit for Blender, which is an add-on that you can now pick and work with. So for those who have been thinking about creating gribbles, or maybe you're thinking about creating some sort of extra meshes on your mesh, then you should consider taking a look at Bygen. And you also notice that there's a couple more things that he has on his page, which you can pick up and start working with. And for creators looking for materials, of course, we did mention this one before, you would now be able to take advantage of these 800 procedural materials that is available for Blender users. So if you're thinking about working with several types of materials that you've always, always wanted to work with, you might want to come through and download this as this is just 20 megabytes as you can store this on your USB and you can load this into your asset browser. All of these materials are pretty impressive and there's just a whole lot of things that you can do with it. And while we talk about asset browser and things that you can do with the asset browser, we have this beautiful stuff right here that deals with assets. So with this, you having lots and lots of assets and of course a huge shout out to Manu for making this one available. So what is this exactly? This is a pack full of assets. It's actually a zip file that you can download and you can load all of the assets into your asset browser. This comes with a couple of nice things that you might want to work with. So in case you're looking for some bolts, some rivets, you will definitely find these things here. And this might just simply come in very handy if you're into kit bashing. And finally, we have the random book generator version two. So if you've always wanted to create a shelf in Blender and you're thinking about how to populate this shelf with tons and tons of books with several tiny details that includes creases, fingerprints, smudges, and all that, 
then you might want to consider checking out the random book generator. The random book generator is heavily powered by the geometry node and it simply makes sense for you to come through and check it out. So for those who've been thinking about creating books or probably you want to generate tons of books with different titles every single time, then you might want to take a look at this and a huge shout out to all of these creators for making this possible. And that's about it. And before we go, let's give a huge shout out to our sponsors, Sketchfab. So Sketchfab is one of the only places on the internet where you can buy, sell, and also preview your 3D content before you download them. It also makes sense to know that Sketchfab offers tons and tons of free content every single week. So just in case you like to get anyone, you can simply go over to explore, go over to downloadables, and you'll find fresh new content every single week. And to get any of those contents that you like to work with, all you need to do is to click on the content and then you can automatically start previewing them before you hit the download button. Something else that the folks at Sketchfab are doing currently is the Sketchfab Weekly Ads Challenge. So this challenge simply means that every single week till the end of the year, you would have one prompt which you can easily work on. Now, the idea for this is to help hone your skill and also create some sort of user participation for those who are thinking about creating one thing every single month. So the whole idea for this is to actually put the community together and help most artists to explore several modeling skills and at the same time, introduce them to new set of projects every single month. And that's about it. For those who would like to take a look at this, probably you want to read it up, you want to join this, link is going to be in the description where you can check it out. And of course, if you'd like to get any of this asset, any of these add-ons, any of the school things that we've already talked about, links to this is also going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, Peace.